What is going on my guys? Welcome back to another video. This video is going to be a lot different than most of the other videos I dropped because this is one of the four videos that I include in my components of a lobotomy kit where I show you how I sound design keys, pads, leads in Analog Lab 5. The other three in-depth videos are how I create cover art, how I create custom 808s, and an in-depth video on sampling alone. So sit tight, lock in, and there's a lot of different gems in here. Hope you appreciate the video. With that being said, let's get into it. You can take literally any key and any lead, and because these are all synthesized sounds, they're gonna sound good once you pitch them all the way down. For example, I can take this poly lead, Love Me Raver. Right, and it's kind of just this like old school, static, honestly kind of boring lead. But if we kind of play it down low, we can even play it all the way down here. And honestly, off rip, in my opinion, this sound, this preset by itself sounds better as a bass than as a lead all the way up here. Just for my personal taste, I would like to hear a little bit more of that high end. So I'm gonna go into the actual VST here. The first thing I'm gonna look for is the filter. Turn this up. Turn that down. Let's mess with this a little bit more. And I would like to add a little bit more, more low end to this bass right here. Maybe take out some of the mids. Nah, we need more of that. Maybe add a little bit more chorus. And I also feel like the attack is a little bit too strong. Let's turn the attack just a little bit up. Kind of soften up that transient in the beginning. And just to kind of help me not get tired of just listening to the same one note, I'm gonna create like a little bit of a pattern here. One thing I would like to add is some glide on this. A little bit more. A little bit more than that too. Already sounds 50 times better. You can also shorten up the filter. I think this is a nice foundation for this bass. I do want to add maybe some other textures in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an instrument on top of this. So let's just keep playing with different pieces until we find something that we like. What? That's kind of tough. That's tough. That could be a fire one shot right there. And we can even do a different pattern. Let me go find like a different MIDI real quick. That little piece at the end, that's pretty interesting. And honestly, even for people that aren't necessarily trying to sell kits or sell their own sounds, their own curity sounds, this will save so much fucking time. Now, um, there's a couple of different ways you can go about this. You can start from complete scratch. You can start from like a sine wave if you want, or you can just start from like a random preset and start tweaking it to make it sound completely different. So another thing I like to do is I like to take my own sounds that I already like and combine them with presets inside Analog Live. So you can choose any sound from emulator to it doesn't matter because you're gonna end up changing it anyway. These are all sounds that I've like uploaded into here. 
go inside and I'm going to mute all of these. I'm going to change the actual sample that's being used here. Right, that's the sample that's being used there. There's already a couple of one shots that I like that things sound cool. Let's use this one and let's take a MIDI just so that we can hear what's going on. And now we can start editing the one shot inside here. If we want to kind of just use the tail, sometimes if you like that sound of the reverb a lot more. Pitches down an octave. You can also play it in reverse, which is kind of crazy. Which is also pretty fire. I want to turn the attack up, soften it up just a little bit. I'm gonna bring this down an octave too. See, you hear this right here? That sounds pretty fire. I want to automate that. I'm going to go ahead and add an instrument, combine that with a different key, see if we get something that sounds a little bit different. That's kind of interesting. One thing I would say is this shit does get CPU heavy. Um, if I wasn't recording my screen, uh, it wouldn't really be that big of a deal, but let's uh, play this back and forth. Synthesis. As a one shot, sort of caption all of that. What would that sound like? Because all of the, all of those little, little movements are gonna be sort of fixed in one spot. Sure, not up. Not bad. So that's an interesting sound. And again, I'm just experimenting, trying a couple different things, uh, trying to put together something in five minutes, but. Uh, I hope you're really taking away a lot of different methods that maybe you haven't thought about, maybe you haven't used yet to create your own sounds. Verse this, slow it down, let's see. That's, that sounds kind of crazy. If you kind of made that sound like a little bit more vintage with some like vintage chorus on it. It's not supposed to be a cook up, but I just want to add a couple more sounds onto this. Octave lower. And I think if we just add a little bit of reverb on there. Sort of cut out some of this low end. All right, so let's go ahead and make a lead now. All we gotta do is turn the sustain up. We want this to slide just a little bit more. Add some modulation here. Do another function on the frequency here. I'm gonna try to soften that up with either a filter or some reverb. And 
we have ourselves a nice little phrase right there. And just to make this sound a little bit more lo-fi, I'm going to go ahead and go into edit properties and take down the sample rate. So it's at 44,000. I'm going to take it down to like 10,000. And let's take this down an octave. And now with the rest of the sample, I think if we just add like a little bit of reverb on it, it'll probably sound fire. Again, like this kind of ended up turning into like a little cook up, but I just wanted to show you sort of using some of these uh, presets in action. So I feel like sometimes like you make a preset and it can like sound fire, but when you're using it, it may not really translate. And sometimes there's a preset that can have an interesting texture, but it doesn't seem like it's extremely usable up until you apply the sound and highlight the interesting textures in that specific preset. Like to me, that's fire right there. And just to add some drums on here, sample with the first keys we reversed it we added this bass underneath this lead that we also just created down and then took the sample rate down to make it sound more vintage and then just just adding some drums on there you know simple drums that kind of knock hard Let's uh, create one more preset. Let's create like some pads slash keys, something that we can use for some chords right here, just to give it like a little bit of a sort of like a breakdown. Okay, so see something like this. These are, this is a key sound. And I wanna turn this into a pad. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put down um, a chord progression. And now I'm gonna take that transient in the beginning out just to make this a softer sound. Let's turn the attack up. And now let's ring out the entire chord like this. This is probably gonna fucking fry my CPU. It's already doing it right now. So um, I'm gonna take out some of those high frequencies, just again, make it softer. And then let's add just a little bit more reverb. So I like the way that sounds. I kinda wanna make this sound a little bit more, um, what's the word? Ethereal, heaven-like. I'm gonna add an instrument and then I'm gonna go to voices here and add a nice little either lead or choir on top of that. That kind of sounds cool. Um, it's just a little bit, a little bit um, in the forefront, way too much in the forefront. like some, maybe some chorus on there. I'm gonna press Alt R. And that's a lot softer. I like that a lot more. Let's 
turn this down a little bit. And then maybe for this part, let's we can add like just way more reverb on the lead just to kind of blend those pieces together. And then it'll lead us right back into the other piece. even add some movement like a side chain to that beginning again i'm just sort of like spitballing ideas here maybe even with the This actually came out a lot better than I expected. It's crazy because a lot of times when you're not really, in my opinion, when you're not aiming for a target, you actually really like where you end up landing, uh, especially when it comes to music. That's just my thesis. That's the way I, I move. It's the only way I can move forward in music. Listen, man, take these tips, some of these methods, the workflow, make it your own, tweak it. And I, I, I really hope this shit just gave you a couple different ways to make new music. I hope it inspired you. Catch up.